So hi everyone and welcome to the most heartbreaking demo ever because you are going to see today how to work with real time data but it's not going to be any real time data it's going to be my head right bit I'm wearing a band right there so we are going to be showing you the differences between streaming batch and much more with my own data so I am Javier Blanco I'm the senior data scientist at Quix. I previously worked as senior data scientist in, in Orange in Spain. It's a telecom company. And before that, in Jaguar Land Rover in the UK. And I have Thomas here with me today. Hi, everyone. So I'm Thomas Neubauer. I'm a CTO and co-founder of Quix. And uh, previously, I worked in McLaren. So in McLaren, we were getting data from F1 cars to cloud, so people in the factory can start building decision insights in real time. And um, it was quite a challenging use case because there was a 30 million values per car per minute. And so no database could handle that. And that was how we kind of uh, end up using streaming technology like Kafka and Kubernetes. But what we found out is that those technologies were actually quite difficult for the people in the data teams to use. And this is how the idea of build something like a Quix um, started to grow. So, yeah. Javi? Yeah, so Thomas has been talking about streaming, and we are in the stream path of, of the conference. But we wanted to ask you to raise your hands if you are working or have worked with the streaming technologies. OK. OK, good. And with Kafka? OK, pretty much everyone. So I'm going to go through the next slide quite quickly, because we have a, a room of people who knows about this. But let's reflect on the differences between streaming and batch uh, for a second. You know that um, the river metaphor is one that is used quite frequently to, to describe this. So we have a flow of data. This is live data coming in as any system would generate, you know that under the batch processing approach, we uh, a set of data is collected over time, and then it is fed on the processing system. So yeah, the metaphor is you fill a bucket of water, and then you throw it to your static data lake, where you are going to perform this, the processing. This is good in some ways, because you have historic data here. If your transformations need from that historic uh, data, it is good, but you're also spending resources here in the loading, uh, in the saving. You are also inserting some lag, some delay between your processing and the moment where the data was generated, right? Following that metaphor, processing will be building up a pipe. So you process the data piece by piece as it is generated. Again, just to reflect a bit more on this, imagine we want to perform an aggregation operation. That's our original data coming in. Under a batch system, you have to perform this intermediate operation where you load the data, uh, you then uh, process it into the aggregation. So you are spending some resources here and inserting some delay that you don't need to with the stream processing. OK, I'm going to skip the next slides because we have a knowledgeable room. And Thomas, do you want to keep talking about this on architecture terms? Yes, thank you, Javi. So let's start with the architecture. And um, basically, with the streaming, we need to change a bit a mindset when we're building uh, architecture for the project. So originally, when you have a batch system, you have database in the middle. And you send data straight to database, and then use some batch framework like Spark to load the data, transform them, and then put them back to database. Uh, and then you, for example, use dashboards or you consume data from database uh, with your consumers. Uh, nothing wrong with that, really, but uh, the problem is that database have to persist data and also serve the query at the same time. And this is where the scalability issues will rise when you get more and more data into the system. And databases are not really great when scaling, uh, even the modern ones. So when we do a streaming architecture, we are still having a database in the picture. It's still very useful for historical analysis and maybe training of your model, etc. But this time, um, it's on a site. And we're basically syncing data from a broker to the database to 
for, for later. And we build the data, we, we build the pipeline in memory using a broker and microservices. So in this diagram, every arrow is one topic in a broker, and every rectangle is one microservices consuming from a topic and publishing results back to different topic. Let's let's talk about that a bit more later. So what is our approach? <clears throat> so our, our approach is using Kafka, Kubernetes, and Python in a marriage together to solve these problems. So microservice approach is quite well established now in the software engineering teams, but it isn't really in data teams, and people are not using it for you know the, the data engineering teams and data scientists are trying to, well, are not really into this at the moment. So what we're trying to do is make it a bit easier, a bit less frictional to, to, start, to start using it. Then using Kafka to get scalability, resilience, and low latency for our pipeline. So Kafka is very, very fast. It's, uh, it's introducing around 10 millisecond delay between microservices if they are working on the same network. It's, it's very well designed for scaling, which I will talk about a bit later, and uh, also including a lot of resiliency features in it. And Python, because Python is the number one language in, uh, for the data people, data scientists, uh, data engineers, etc. There's a massive ecosystem of all different libraries. ML ecosystem is really there, so that's why Python. So, okay, my mouse. Sorry. So the main concept in streaming is pub and sub. It's a microservice that's subscribing for input, getting the data into the microservice, doing some transformation that could be very simple, data cleaning, data normalization, data filtering, up to very complex model that's, for example, using ML, and then publishing result to another topic. So this is everything that microservice has to do. Um, why that's a good idea? Well, first of all, it's very scalable. Because those topics, the input and output, are formed from smaller topics. We call them partitions. And those partitions basically redistributing load of your topic to different nodes in a broker. So broker is formed from 5, 10, 20 nodes. And so imagine if you have 10 partitions in this input topic. That means that 10% um, of your traffic will be in each that partition, roughly. And those are then redistributed around. They are also replicated. So you can set replica 2, for example, which will then send every message twice, but to the different nodes in your broker. That means if you have a hardware failure in one of the nodes, then the stream processing is insured. Then the middle part is where we use the Kubernetes and uh, our microservice is scaled uh, using replica system. So this is basically how you scale the compute part of your processing. So when you have more and more instances of your processing in a consumer group, what, that would, what, what, what it will happen is that the partitions will be redistributed equ equally in your consumer group. So if you have nine partitions, each instance would get three. And essentially, 33% of your traffic going to each instance of this a consumer group. It's also resilient because if you have... Um, if you have a bug in your code or maybe a hardware failure in a Kubernetes cluster, the others would take the load until the third one is get uh, restarted. So let's let's build a simple demo together today to um, to show you how this looks looking in a real real uh, real example. So I will get to our platform. Cool. So here we have a topic, and as you can see, the phone data topic is already getting data, and that's because I have here my phone, which has been converted for the purpose of this demo to IoT device. So it's sending acceleration data, temperature, GPS location, but also it's sending a heart rate from Javi's um, sensor or the, the strap sensor using a Bluetooth connection. So if I go to our topic, you can see here active stream. And first of all, I can start with the GeForce data. Cool. So if I if I shake, it's auto scale because 
we get some GeForce data there, and now it's uh, now it's calm because it's on the table. I can get rid of that and look at the heart rate, which is now coming from Javi. 79, yeah, 80, etc. Yeah, so, I'm getting nervous as you mentioned <laughs> me, so it's gonna start going up. So what you're looking at right now is data being streamed from this heart rate sensor through the Bluetooth to my phone, and from the phone <laughs> to the cloud using a, a WebSocket gateway service to the Kafka. Um, and you might ask why we're using gateway service with WebSocket connection. Kafka is not really designed to connect to end devices. It's an internal backbone rather than IoT um, hub. So then it's going to cloud, and we subscribe for data in this browser. So quite a, quite a journey. So now, if we have this data, usually what you need to do first is um, analyze them. You need to look at, hang on, what's, what's going on? What's coming in? What I can do with this data? So that's why we have this persistence here. And this is exactly what we show you in the slides. If I go back to slides, to that diagram, that column is this. When I enable it, you get the database, and you sync that topic into it, which means that then you can basically go here and observe data that had been streamed before. So you can see that we were practicing this morning. So I can go here, and you can see GeForce data that happened at 11.22, when we were testing here. Now, this is something that gives you more idea what's going on. You can also bring it to Jupyter Notebook, but Javi will show, show you that later. Now, so how we, assuming that we have idea what we want to build, how we build this pipeline? So let's start with something super simple, like the one-on-one -on -one example of pub and sub service. So you go to transformations, because we solved the source. We have a data in platform already. Um, and here we have the template for pub and sub service. Now, this library, this is the idea of making the microservices a bit easier. It's like a project generator where you just answer some questions, and you get the whole microservice with the Docker image, with all credentials, everything pre-configured to work with your infrastructure out of box. So that means that if I press next, and I call it something like GeForce Total, and I listen to phone data and send it to GeForce Total. Basically, here you are you are calling the topic names, right? Yes. That you we are listening to or or producing to. So basically, what you see here is a full Git repository with a microservice code populated in in a master branch, um, and now you can you can clone it locally to get you know, to get it into your IDE and debug it line by line. Or if you want to do that, uh, you can also use our web browser to to um, uh, write the code here. So without any changes, if I just press run, this will connect to the heart rate, and you see GeForce data. It's lots of messages, hard to read, but you see that we're getting data in this line uh, number 18, and now we can do some magic. Now, I um, quite often show this line, so data scientists and data engineers like to use data frames, so you can do this, and why this is actually possible? Because the Quix SDK, which is what we're using here, um, introducing a tabular format for data in broker. So you don't have to deserialize it and serialize it by yourself. It's using protobuf under the hood, but you don't have to care. It's basically doing all the deserialization and serialization for you. So you have it served as a data frame. So now this is working. So let's create a new feature, something super simple. Uh, so I have here a small code snippet, which I'm just going to paste here. And there we are. And what this does is, if there's a GeForce data, I calculate a total, uh, total 
uh, acceleration for all dimensions in absolute value. Just a simple feature. So if I press run, um, as you can see in a console, we're getting 10, 10 Gs. And if I shake it, it's getting higher. And now you can also check the data output, how the messages looks like. There we are. And here we have a GeForce total as a new feature. And it is in the output topic because of this line. So this is how you sell, sorry, sell, uh, send a data frame to the output topic in very easily in one liner. Uh, so I hope that this makes sense because um, how we will now use this approach to build something more real. So, um, Javi, do you want to yeah, take over? Sure. So I'm going to take my laptop. Uh, Thomas, can you connect that there? No, it's the email there. Yeah. Good. Good. So you can see my screen there, perfect. Um, let's say that up to this point, we follow a quite typical approach here. You, you are playing the role of a data engineer, and I'm going to be playing the, the role of a data scientist. So Thomas has created this system that ingests data in real time. We have just seen it. We've been played to do some transformation. And now it's my turn as a data scientist to try to add some value to this data. So. What I'm going to try to do is calculate the calories that I'm burning. Uh, we have uh, all the data we should need, uh, which is basically my heart rate and some biological um, metrics that I know. And obviously, I'm not an expert in, in calories burning. But I did some little research, and apparently, there are these two ways to burn calories. One is really just by keeping alive, and it is an intuitively expensive just to be alive. We have to keep our thermoregulation, we have to respirate, we have to um, yeah, keep our blood circulating, and that is really expensive in terms of energy. And then we also uh, burn calories by moving. I'm not going to go through the details, but you see we have a formula here by Nooks et al. that give us the amount of estimated calories burned over a minute, depending on the uh, average head rate in that period, and those other metrics, like my weight, my age, etc. So I'm going to create a transformation that will generate the calories that I'm burning as I'm speaking here to you. What Thomas has just built is something like this, right? We have the real-time data coming from, from the phone in that topic. That topic, we are persisting it to a database. This will allow me like to, to do a historic analysis if I want it. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, basically, if I access to the data here in this database, I will work with a traditional batch approach. But what I want to do is to react to that real uh, time data and build this transformation there in, in our microservices approach. Again, we are following all the time this batch versus streaming. I'm going to build this transformation first in a batch approach, and then we'll turn it to streaming. So to work in a batch approach, uh, where am I? IoT demo. Uh, uh, here it is. Good. So as Thomas said earlier, we are saving the data in our database. So I could come here, check the head rate, and look at the latest point of data. And you see there how I got a little bit nervous when I started talking, and I was a bit calmer while Thomas was doing it. Uh, no, actually, here is where I started, and here is where I'm back to talking, right? And we could be refreshing that, and yeah, you see, I get a little bit nervous when I speak, right? OK, we could explore more data in this table view or, or do any other visual analysis here. But we could also query that data from the database with this code and take it anywhere, really. So because I'm a data scientist, I love Jupyter Notebooks. So I'm going to come here to my collab. I'm going to paste this P3 
piece of code that I have just shown you, that I have just copied, and there it is. That is the data from the database load now in my Jupyter Notebook. So this is the traditional batch approach. Uh, we have the data stored in a database, and I'm bringing it here to my processing system. And I could do some processing now. Uh, here, for instance, I'm bringing some other historic data to compare. I'm merging those two together. And I could check at the distribution plot of my head rate. Uh, one is me practicing. The other one is me giving a talk to you. Um, you could tell which one is which, right? Uh, yeah, or we could do another type of aggregation. Again, look at my average hair rate versus uh, normally. Or we could do what, what, I, what we are here to do, which is calculating the calories. As you can see there, that is exactly the formula that I show you in the slides. Doesn't have anything complicated on it. The only pre processing that we need before applying that function is that uh, because that function is estimated for a period of time, we will need to calculate the time between each timestamps in our, in our data there. So I'm doing that here, and we have the time delta between each, uh, time, between each point of data. And then I have the average head rate, heart rate, sorry, uh, between those two points. So you see here, uh, it was like two cents of a second between this data point and that one. And the average head rate over that period was 80.5, because the previous one was 81, and now we are in 80, right? Now, with that, we can apply the function that I was showing you. So I'm going to create this new column in the data frame called cal. For the head rate, I'm passing the data frame column with the interpolated head rate. And for the time delta, yeah, the time delta column that I have generated. Then this is some oxygen capacity when, when resting. This is my weight, my age. And here we have the calories that I'm burning between each of the time, um, between each of the data points. And I could do something like calculating the sum of the, um, of the current data. So this is my stream ID. I'm going to copy that and look. I'm going to put that there. And this says that I've spent pretty much 19 calories, right? Is this right? Well, it was some time ago when we loaded the data into the Jupyter Notebook. But by the time that it has taken us to process the data, uh, generate the, the function, check, check everything, this is now outdated. This is the traditional batch up, uh, problem, right? So let's bring this same transformation to a streaming system. And for that, we are going to come back to Quicks. Here I am. And the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create that time delta interpolation. So I want to create a new column in our um, phone data that tells me the seconds that have been since the last data point. We don't need to build that ourselves. As Thomas introduced earlier, we have this library. This is open source. We have a community contributing here. Um, there is something like interpolation. So I can preview that code. I can check the documentation. And yeah, this does exactly what I would like, right? So I'm going to keep it as interpolation. The input topic is going to be uh, phone data. There it is. The output topic is going to be um, phone data heart. And the parameter that I'm going to be wanting to interpolate on is heart rate. And this is a no-code sample that I can just deploy. I could save it as a project and then edit it and use it as a template, or I can just hit deploy, and this should be working. Whilst that's building, no, let, let's, let's wait for it to, to get built, and we'll see if this is working. 
Again, what this is doing behind the scenes is working, uh, creating the microservice um, with Kubernetes so that I, as a data scientist, don't have to bother to do this. Good. It's taking a little bit longer than I expected. So I'm going to show you briefly what we have done. Remember, with batch approach, we really have a set of data like this with times and head rate. And what we did was a window operation where we calculated the time delta. So for T2, it was T2 minus T1. And then the average head rate between those two points. Then having that transformation done, we could do the calories calculation. Now in streaming data, we only get the latest point, right? Like that. In T1, we get that. In T2, we get that. T3. So how are we doing this calculation of T4 minus T3? That's what the library item that we just shown does for you. So it has a memory uh, bill inside that only keeps the little amount of data that we need for the calculation. So when we are at T2, we are also saving in memory the information from T1 so that we can perform that operation. But only as we need it. In T3, we will only save to 2 and so on. So this is what the library item that I'm building is doing for us. Um, uh, I don't know what has gone up. So I'm going to check again. Head rate. Phone data. Great. Phone data hard. Get deploy. Yes, why this is building, is it clear how we are doing this transformation? How we are keeping just the amount of memory that we need in place? Yeah? Cool. Any idea, Thomas? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's called heartbreaking demo. No, we have we have an interpolation there. So. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know why what this is showing because yeah, it is actually working. Uh, here we see the deployment. You see, it's listening to the phone data and it's outputting um, to that hair hair rate phone. There you see the data coming in. Uh, we are not persisting the data coming out, but it is working. So if we check the data view. As Thomas did earlier, I can check the inputs, and I should be able to check the, the outputs as well. There we are. So check. So head rate, yeah, that was original. But now we also have delta time in seconds, which has been calculated, and the interpolated head rate. This is the average head rate between the previous data point and the current one. And with this information, we are now able to do the calories transformation. So I'm going to uh, click there to add a new transformation. This will take me to the library again. I'm going to select Python and Hello World to keep it simple. Yeah? Good. I'm going to call this calorie calculation. And what is this listening to? To the topic what I was outputting before, right? That's where I have the, the latest transformation. And then I'm going to output this to phone data hard calories. I'm saving this as a project. I'm not deploying this time straight away. And this takes us to this Git project. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to copy and paste the code from here. But the first thing that I will need is this function that I was using, right? So I'm pasting that function there that does the calorie calculation. And now, I'm just going to copy and paste this here. So that. And we'll see in a second what this is doing. Good. So check there, line 26. 
we are listening to the latest data. We are converting that to a data frame because it just makes our life easier. And then I'm calculating the calories burned over the, the last two data points uh, using the exact same function that we saw in Colab. Then I'm printing in the console the calories burned. I'm adding those calories burned to a new column into the data frame that I created. And then I'm sending that data frame to the output topic. And check how simple it is, line 47, to send this modified data to an output Kafka topic. Right? I'm going to run this in this live IDE. Let's see. Cross fingers. OK, listening to stream. And this should start in a second. Mm -hmm. There it is. Nice. So those are my calories uh, burned as we speak in real time. That's what I'm burning here right now. So we build this transformation in real time. Now, Thomas, I'm going to take it back to you so you put the data into some place. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Javi. So basically what you saw was Javi building two microservices, although he wasn't really building the first one. But every, every microservice was deployed as a container into Kubernetes. And this second one, I'm just going to now deploy it as well. But because it's a code, I have to, I have to also first build it into Docker. Luckily, that's not that hard. Um, good. So hopefully, you can see my screen in a minute. Yeah. Cool. So going back to home screen here into pipeline view. Um, yeah, we have here two interpolations. I'm going to delete one of them. And I'm going to go back to the code of Javi. Yeah, I'm deploying it. Yeah. So what you see now is that this is being built into Docker image and then deployed as a pod into in the Kubernetes as a container. So what we want to do now? Well, we want to consume this data somehow. So I'm going to build more microservices and more stuff. Um, so going through this again. Now we have interpolation. Then we have a calories calculation. And now we want to see how much calories we have burned for each session. So as Javi is here today, this is one session from the start, and we are accumulating calories burned. And we want to see real time as it's moving, as it's accumulating. So for that, we're going to create in-memory view. What the in-memory in -memory view means? It's a stateful processing microservice. So this time, we're adding into the mix a state. So we discussed this before. We have input topic, output topic microservice in the middle, but this time we're also going to have persistence volume under the hood. Now, how it works? We, we're relying on Kafka checkpointing system. What the checkpointing system means? Well, the way how it works is that each topic is like a queue, and as you're consuming data through it, you're committing offset, which means I have processed my data until this, this um, time this message. Now, when this happens, which is by default 10 to 20 seconds interval, but you can configure it to a different one, we also persist the state to the disk. So we are not saving it every message we process. That would be wasteful and slow. We're doing it only when the checkpoint is committed. What that means, when, they restart, when the service gets restarted, it would start from the last checkpoint, and we have the last checkpoint state persisted as well. So we load it. And we continue in memory only. So going back to quicks, I'm going to press here a new node. And we have another template called in memory view. There we are. It's another microservice. And here I'm going to listen to this topic. We have pre selected. And I'm going to call it calories view topic. There we are. So now um, we have yet another microservice. And we can here look at the code. So on the left, you see the Docker file that I was talking about last time. And, and dependencies here in a, in a 
requirements.txt. So you can add any pip package you want. It could be numpy, pandas, or tensorflow, you name it. So going back to our function, here I'm gonna do some changes. So we're not gonna listen to engine RPM, but cal. So that's the, we don't want, we don't need this. And we're gonna group it by rider. So rider is actually a person collecting the data. It's a bit difficult with one hand, but hopefully it's gonna work. Cool, so it's almost there. And I will just try it first to see if I have everything correct. Run. So what this code does, and I will try to make it a bit smaller. There we are, it's, it's working. So what it does is basically accumulating every message as it's coming from a calories microservice and just adding it to one value per stream, per device. So we just accumulating this state. Um, so now, because it's working, I'm just gonna stop it and deploy it as a service with one core. And there we are. So we are almost there. So now we have all this whole pipeline here and you can see that it's being built. So I'm gonna cre create a destination. So what destination means in this context? It could be a database. So you just sync your result into Snowflake, Redshift, etc. It could be your application. So you stream results back to your product. It could be, for example, a shopping recommendations. Uh, and for that, you probably use WebSocket if it's website or other services. Uh, or it could be a dashboard. So, but this time it is an in-memory dashboard. So you're not gonna touch database here. We're just gonna have this state in memory and in a similar fashion, we're gonna bring it to website. So uh, I'm gonna use library dash. Uh, anybody uh, using dash here? Oh, that's unexpected. <laughs> okay, so. Real-time dashboard. So what, what Dash is, is a simple Python library that helps you to build dashboards without using JavaScript. Um, that's all what it is. So I'm gonna listen to Calories view and I'm gonna use Rider as a index. So that's it. Uh, this will just now install Dash and uh, its dependencies. And when it's there, uh, we will run it and get the website address from Quix so we can print it on a, in, a, in a browser. So this would take like a 10 or 20 seconds. So what, what this is basically doing now is that we got a port in Kubernetes for ourselves for this session of IDE, which has all the runtime and all the dependencies that you need for building Python code. And it's now inside that port installing all the pip packages. It's done. So I will press run. Cool, so it's, it's working. So if I press this button, there we are. And you can see it's moving. This is how we're accumulating <laughs> Javi calories as he's uh, standing here. Obviously it's catching up uh, with the leading edge. That's how Kafka works. You have a queue and, uh, and that's now being processed. So going back to our slides, um, this is the final result. We have the pipeline that's not touching disk anywhere. And that's why it's very performant. If we go to our pipeline and if I just show the resources that one of the, one of the services are using. So for example, the calculi cal calorie calculation is using the zero point, yeah, it's almost nothing. And that's because basically what's happening is that uh, data being deserialized, processed, and sent to topic. There's no IO operations. Uh, it's using protobuf, and uh, and that's why why it's so performant. Also, if it would have more data, if all of you were sending data, uh, what we would basically do is scale all those services to multiple replicas, 
with with the replica slide that you saw in the dialog, and that would mean that they would share your uh, they would share the streams coming from from devices, and uh, and uh, this is how you can basically scale it pretty much forever. So this is for this demo. Uh, I believe we have ten minutes. So um, do you have? Any questions uh, regarding this? Uh, was it clear? Uh, we are here to, to answer them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's okay. I'm pretty much standing here. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand because I come from e commerce sort of show background. Mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to understand how would I apply this. I mean, this is pretty neat. And I mean, it's a pretty, I would say, bold move to so show you our hard. Uh, we need it for the stream. Otherwise, okay. it will be heard on the stream. So, okay, so I'm actually trying to understand how would I use uh, this exact thing because it's pretty neat in e commerce search. Like, uh, I'm actually trying to understand this because it looks pretty neat. So in e-commerce, there are various applications for streaming. Uh, it, it it could be recommendations, for example. So you're tracking you're tracking people in your e-shop in your application. You're tracking what their behavior. That doesn't necessarily mean only what they putting into their basket, but maybe how they clicking to buttons, how they moving, and you can detect patterns. Like if the person is about to bail out, there there could be some pattern in their behavior. And you, for example, can in real time give them some discount or maybe suggest some other good in your in your shop that might keep them in your in your system and not leaving them. So and this all basically works in a way that you're sending data through the WebSocket gateway as we did with our application to the Kafka, where you have a set of microservices as we show, which are looking at the data, trying to understand them, predicting certain situations and where the situation happens when, for example, your model detect, okay, this person is about to leave, I need to <laughs> save, save save it. Uh, you send event with discount 10% and you send it to the same WebSocket connection to the browser and in the browser it suddenly apply 10% or show dialog, look, we're just giving you 10% discount. And this is how you can do it real time uh, before person actually leaves. And something I was going to say, but for you and everyone, we are terrible salesmen, Thomas, because uh, our marketing team prepared something special for this occasion. I don't know if we said it earlier, but Quick C is for free for developers. Uh, it has an amount of credits that you can use to, to try it. But for the people attending to the conference, our marketing people have prepared some nice um, double credit thing. So if you sign up now, or, or if you're planning to give this a go, I will sign up just now, because uh, that will give you double credits. You will be able to build any type of a streaming service as we show. So yeah, if you are interested, I will sign up there. And you can contact us through, through the live help in there. So if you are stuck or don't know really how to use it, there is that live help where Thomas, I, and many others will, will answer. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any other questions? Was it something not clear or? Cool. So that means that uh, we thank you, for, thank you for coming here. And I hope you like it. And if you have any questions or you want to just chat with us, just click on that button that Javi showed you. Um, and we're going to be around. No. Yes, yeah. and we are going to be around. So thank you very much. Thank you.